Welcome to Best Ball Study Hall. I am your host, Jeremiah Retzlaff. You can find me on X at Coach Retzlaff1. So all the rage right now is week 17. We have the schedule released. And what do we want to draw out of it? Now we have some guidance. Uh, on Best Ball Night School, we have been doing some progress reports for teams. Now what's neat about this is we can link teams together. So for week 17, I have a graphic here on the broadcast and audio listeners, I'll just fill you in. I've got Rams and Cardinals. I made a little Google sheet and I have all in blue, the Rams, and then all in red, the Cardinals. Then I sorted by draft round. So on my display, I can see all the Rams and Cardinals in order. So as I progress, I have a little tool and a guide for me as I go through these underdog drafts. Now you're always going to click players on your queue to favorite them, to star them. All right, that's star life. And you want to set them by order. But by making this sheet, I understand what I have to look at when I'm attacking both the Rams and the Cardinals. So let's put it into practice. I have the Rams with Puka Nakua in the first round. And in the second round, you also have Kyron Williams. But for the Cardinals, you have Marvin Harrison at the one-two turn. So between Puka, Marvin Harrison, and Kyron Williams in those first two rounds, you have the opportunity to start building your game stack of Rams and Cardinals. Now you also have in round three, going down the board, Cooper Cup for the Rams. Round four, Trey McBride. The beauty is I've just laid out five players for the Rams and the Cardinals. Are you going to get all five? No, but you see your optionality in rounds one through four. Further on down, Kyler Murray round seven. So the beauty is with Kyler Murray, you have him in round seven. You can cap your Rams Cardinals stacks, but also round 12, if you accordion out, now you have a little bit of a parachute with Matthew Stafford in round 12 for the Rams. So between Kyler and Stafford, you just have to think you have a range now from seven to 12. Because somebody else will take Kyler Murray while you're building these Rams and Cardinals stacks. It will happen to you. So then you have an opportunity to go later to bail out. All right. In case of emergency break glass, you would go to Matthew Stafford. Further on down the line, eighth and ninth round, you have James Conner and Trey Benson. So you have opportunity to get backfield share of the Cardinals there. For the Rams, the second running back. Blake Horm in round 11. I just spoke to Matthew Stafford in round 12. So up to 12 rounds, you have opportunities to cap your Rams Cardinals stacks with Kyler and Stafford. And then the rest of the draft, you're back filling that game stack. So take round 14, Michael Wilson. Round 16, Zay Jones for the Cardinals. On the Rams side, you have Demarcus Robinson in round 17. And then the two tight ends that we don't quite know who will be the starting tight end, but we have Colby Parkinson and Davis Allen in round 18. In the back, Tyler Higby is also listed as well, but I'm not sure what role Tyler Higby will have. I have been keying in on Colby Parkinson and some Davis Allen. Tutu Atwell is there in round 18, and then Greg Dortch is there in round 18 as well. So my little graphic that I have, round 1 through 18, it's a mix of blue and red, so I understand all the different pockets of the draft with which I want to attack the Rams and Cardinals stack. So now what I'll do is I will go over to my drafts in practice. I, I was talking earlier today on the Destination Devi Discord with the fellows over there, great community. We were talking about the opportunity of possibly getting Puka Nakua if he falls at the turn and pairing him with Marvin Harrison for this Cardinals and Rams stack. So here I have, it's beautiful. Puka Nakua fell to me at 11 and the person in between went Garrett Wilson and Jameer Gibbs. So now I have the opportunity to go click on Marvin Harrison. So I already have my setup for my stack week 17 Cardinals Rams. I have Puka Nakua and Marvin Harrison. So I have a, a set of both, and I will aim to get Kyler Murray. But if I miss on Kyler Murray, 
I will go and get Matthew Stafford. Will I have the opportunity to get both? Yes, I really hope so. And in the event that I do, if you do this simulation, this rep, get these reps in, these exercises, I will have opportunity to get both for those game stacks. Now I'm going to slide down to another Cardinals Rams stack that I have. This one is deeper in the rotation. I have Kyler Murray and Matthew Stafford. So there I go. I spoke to it before. You'll have opportunities to get both. I have Kyler Murray and Matthew Stafford. My one tight end is Trey McBride. So I have a stack with Kyler Murray. My running backs are Alvin Kamara, Jonathan Brooks, Trey Benson, and Blake Corum. So there I have Trey Benson with Kyler Murray and Blake Corum with Matthew Stafford. And then Ray Davis is my fifth running back. Here I go now. I have Puka Nakua. There he is. He's paired with Matthew Stafford. Drake London. Cooper Cup. He's with Matthew Stafford. Christian Kirk. Rashid Shahid. And then there is Michael Wilson. So I have plenty of exposure to the Rams and the Cardinals stacks. I'm at pick 177. And I have opportunity for in my queue. Colby Parkinson, Demarcus Robinson, Davis Allen, and Zay Jones. Now, Zay Jones is at ADP of 189, and I also have a pick at 184, so I think I can wait. And, of course, I spoke to Colby Parkinson, Demarcus Robinson, Davis Allen. I can wait on them. They're much later in my draft. So in my queue is with a 2-5-6-1 build, I have opportunities to go off of this game stack because you don't want to go overboard too much, but you want plenty of exposure. So some other areas that I can go will be tight end with Juwan Johnson. I have Isaiah Likely if I want to get a second tight end here. And then I could also enhance my running back room, try and go get Khalil Herbert. Could he be a speculative play to possibly get traded someday in this offseason? I don't know. We don't know what we don't know. So I put Khalil Herbert in the queue. So right now at pick 177, I actually think I'm going to go for a second tight end here. I am going to go for Jawan Johnson with the Saints. And I hope that Zay Jones falls to me. If Zay Jones doesn't fall to me, that'll be A-OK. -okay. I'll go into another direction. So I'm going to add Jawan Johnson to the squad. So let's take a look at this whole team again. I'll read it off. We had the last draft. I went Puka with Marvin Harrison Jr. This draft, I have Kyler Murray, Matthew Stafford. My tight ends are Trey McBride and Jawan Johnson, who I just added to the squad. My running backs are, and be listening out for Cardinals and Rams, Alvin Kamara, Jonathan Brooks, Trey Benson, Blake Corum, Ray Davis. Then receivers, again, listen out for Cardinals and Rams, Puka Nakua, Drake London, Cooper Cup, Christian Kirk, Rashid Shahid, and Michael Wilson. So I have a 2562 build so far in 15 rounds. So let's go to another draft. I have the Lions and 49ers. This is a Lions and 49ers team that I have building. Amon Ross St. Brown with pick five. Brandon Ayuk with pick 20. George Pickens, pick 44. Sam Laporta, pick 29. So we've talked about tight end war value. I am going for some Sam Laporta when I have Lions stacks. So I'm at pick 53. Who do I have here? I have in my queue. I've clicked on my Lions. So I've got David Montgomery, who will be there at 74. Jameson Williams at 95. Jared Goff at 120. George Kittle at 66. Brock Purdy at 103. But I'm not ready to click any of those players, as I'm going to try and see if George Kittle falls to me at pick 68. He's ADP of 66. What I'm going to try to do right now is get a little bit of Chiefs exposure. So I spoke to Amon Ra, Ayuk, Laporta. That is a game stack with Detroit and San Francisco. I mentioned I have George Pickens. The Chiefs play the Pittsburgh Steelers in week 17. So what I am going to do right now is I'm going to apply the principle of a skinny stack. I may not have the Pittsburgh quarterback, but I, I might be able to have Russell Wilson 
or Justin Fields later in the draft. And I'm going to miss out here. I've missed out now on Patrick Mahomes. But a DFS principle is skinny stacks. And when we're in a one-week situation of week 17, I'm going to want some exposure to some Steelers and some Chiefs. So just because I haven't gotten Patrick Mahomes doesn't mean I give up on getting some game exposure for the Chiefs and the Steelers. So I have Xavier Worthy in my queue. I'm going to click him. So now my team is Amon Ross St. Brown, Brandon Ayuk, George Pickens, Xavier Worthy, and Sam Laporta. So I have a skinny stack correlation of George Pickens and Xavier Worthy. And then, of course, I have with the Lions 49er stack, Amon Ra, Brandon Ayuk, Sam Laporta. My next pick at 68, I hope that George Kittle will be there. He's going at 66 ADP. Somebody else may be trying to go for a skinny stack with these 49ers and these Detroit Lions. So it's no guarantee, but I have all these players in my queue. As we go, we are going to get more reflexive and quicker in our reps and understanding how this schedule lays out. So let's go to a best ball mania stack. I have currently on this team, Jameer Gibbs at 12, Marvin Harrison Jr. at 13. So I have a couple different ways that I can go with my stacking options, which games I may want to attack. So here I'm at the 36-37, 3-4 turn. Josh Allen, I think, is such a huge value, excellent pick. I'm going to have to scroll down just a little bit, and I'm going to have to yank the steering wheel just a tad when I double tap here, I am going to go for the Josh Allen Dalton Kincaid stack. My one conundrum that I will have, though, is when I come back at the turn for round five and six is catching up on wide receiver. But I have to try this so I understand and find out and know what I'm doing. So here I go. I go Josh Allen, click him, then I click Dalton Kincaid. He's a about 11 pick reach right now. But I'm okay with that because I know Dalton Kincaid will not come back to me. So I have Josh Allen set up with Dalton Kincaid and then Jameer Gibbs, Marvin Harrison. So I have a 1-1-1-1 one, 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 one build, QB running back, receiver, tight end. I have plenty of areas that I can go for this draft, many different directions that I can run towards. Now I have a 49ers... Lions, Chiefs, Steelers. I've got a draft going on right now where I have Jameer Gibbs and Brandon Ayuk. So I have Jameer Gibbs and Brandon Ayuk. I have the opportunity to attack that 49ers and Lions stack. Now when I have a wraparound pick, I'm at pick 35 and I will have 38. I've got 36, 37 in between me. My last draft, I was 36, 37. Now we're repping the wraparound pick I have with pick 35, I am going to click. I want to come away with Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. I am going to click Travis Kelsey. I'm putting him on my team. And then with these double taps in between, I feel like I have a better chance of D or disincentivizing the person between me to take Patrick Mahomes. If you take the weapon that goes with your quarterback, the one beauty of taking that weapon that isn't the quarterback is you don't feel like you're going to get stuck getting sniped. So if I were to choose Patrick Mahomes, there's a very high chance with Travis Kelsey, based on his standalone value, that this person in between me could click on Travis Kelsey, and then I'm stuck. Do I reach on Xavier Worthy and Marquise Brown? I wouldn't want to do that. So then I'm waiting later in my draft until I get my next pick. And then I'm, it may not be a guarantee that I have Xavier Worthy and Marquise Brown available to me. By taking Travis Kelsey on the front end, I'm baking in my opportunity to pivot in another direction should Patrick Mahomes get taken on me. But then this person between me, it's their problem to find a stack with a stacking partner with Patrick Mahomes. So I've laid and let off pressure for myself because if Patrick Mahomes gets taken, I have other ways I can go. I'm not stuck holding the bag on Patrick Mahomes. I already have Travis Kelsey. 
he's got a positional advantage there. And then I would just go to other players in my queue. Let's go to another draft. I have a conundrum, or it's just a scenario, right? We have all these reps that we're trying to get better at this game, and it just helps. You're in scenarios, and I've titled this one Brooks or Rice. In best ball night school, I had a situation where I believe I had five receivers, and I was thinking, do I get greedy and get Rashi Rice as my sixth wide receiver, or do I go Jonathan Brooks as my second running back? So I'm in a very similar situation with this squad here. Let me read it out. Josh Allen, Dalton Kincaid. So I have a stack of Josh Allen and Dalton Kincaid at the onesie positions. Running back, I have Rashad White. Love the value of Rashad White, and I also need to click on some more Rashad White. My receivers, I have four wide receivers. So when I was going for Rashi Rice as my sixth wide receiver, when I was de deliberating between Rice and Brooks in my best ball night school draft, I went in and went for Brooks. But here we have four receivers versus the five in that last draft. So here are my four wide receivers. Amon Ross St. Brown, Chris Olave, Keon Coleman, and Deontay Johnson. I don't love the Keon Coleman pick, but take into consideration, I have Josh Allen, Dalton Kincaid, and Keon Coleman. And I love the affordability of Jets. In my queue right now, I have Mike Williams at 105, Aaron Rodgers 149, Malachi Corley, is very much he feels like he's free at 168 and of course you got tyler conklin and braylon allen so i have some jets down the board in my queue right now though between brooks and rice i had spoke to best ball night school how i will in this situation opt for some rashi rice if it were a conundrum between brooks and rice and get greedy to tack on rice as my fifth or my sixth wide receiver but now that the schedule is out my one running back is Rashad White. So with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers playing the Carolina Panthers, I am going to click on some Jonathan Brooks because I'm getting some skinny correlation. I also, instead of just skinny correlation, I may have the opportunity to cap Rashad White and Jonathan Brooks with both Baker Mayfield and Bryce Young. So let me read this squad again. I've got Josh Allen. Paired with Dalton Kincaid, Rashad White, and Jonathan Brooks are my two running backs. Amon Ross St. Brown, Chris Olave, Keon Coleman, and Deontay Johnson are my four wide receivers. So I have a one, two, four, one build. I was in this predicament before with Brooks versus Rice. And in this predicament, again, because I have Rashad White, I did the tiebreaker and went with Jonathan Brooks. Were I to not have Rashad White on Tampa Bay, for that correlation of the Tampa Bay Carolina game, I would most likely go and try and get greedy with Rashi Rice as my fifth wide receiver. But these scenarios just come up, and this is why we practice them. Let's take a look. Gibbs, Jameer Gibbs. I titled this draft Jameer Gibbs Fell. I have Bijan Robinson at pick nine, and Jameer Gibbs fell to me at pick 16. So that's just wild value. Jonathan Taylor and Saquon Barkley both went ahead of Jameer Gibbs in this draft. So I have Bijan Robinson, Jameer Gibbs. At the top of my queue, I have Devonta Smith. I have Cooper Cup. I have Travis Kelsey. And the direction that I've been going, I really have to go with a wide receiver here. It's my third round pick. I've gone RBRB. RB, so I really have to go ham on these receivers. So something I will do between Devonta Smith and Cooper Cup, I'm going to click on some Cooper Cup because I know I can get a cap stack with Cooper Cup with Matthew Stafford later. We spoke to before in round 12. Devonta Smith, I can't get at this point Devonta Smith and Jalen Hurts. So I am going to get my first wide receiver in Cooper Cup. And I have Bijan, Jameer Gibbs, and Cooper Cup. One thing I want to point out before we close, I have a cool primary stack and skinny stack options. Something I notice about week 16, the Ravens, Steelers, they play each other. Then the Texans and Chiefs play each other. 
week 17, those four teams blend and cross play the other opponents. The Chiefs play the Steelers and the Ravens play the Texans. So week 16 and 17, I just think it would be really cool if you get your primary stacks between these four teams, Ravens, Steelers, Texans, and Chiefs, and then you can get skinnier stack options with the teams that you don't cap your stacks with. So we are trying to get skinny for hot best ball summer and best ball off QB player exposures are important. And one way that we implement that is our correlation with skinny stacks. And I spoke to earlier how that is a DFS concept in a one week exercise. So week 16, week 17 combinations will be key. I just spoke to one just a moment ago, but here are some skinny stacks that I like with a single digit round player and a double digit round player. So I'll, I'll talk about them below. Ready? The Broncos at the Bengals. Week 17, I like getting T. Higgins in round four, and then Jaleel McLaughlin in round 15. You figure you could get up game script-wise with the Bengals, and Jaleel McLaughlin could be utilized in that pass game. And then with the Cowboys at the Eagles, you get Saquon Barkley in round two, and you miss out on Jalen Hurts, and we miss out on Dak Prescott. You still want some exposure to these Cowboys and Eagles, a player that you can play off of Saquon Barkley. That's super affordable is Brandon cooks in round 12. So you have round two where you pay up with Saquon Barkley. You don't know what you don't know until you find out with your quarterbacks, somebody else snipes hurts and attack Prescott there. You still have an opportunity to go after Brandon cooks in round 12. So now let's take the Kansas city chiefs. With the Pittsburgh Steelers, Travis Kelsey, round four, five turn, and then Pat Fryermuth in round 12. The beauty is you take Travis Kelsey in the four, five turn. You don't want to invest too much in tight end the rest of the way. So why not go for Pat Fryermuth, who is super affordable in round 10? And then lastly, I have Jonathan Taylor in round two to Wandale Robinson in round 16. You miss out. This is a scenario. Again, these skinny stacks. You miss out on the quarterbacks, but you want some skinny stack correlation. You don't get Anthony Richardson, and you don't get Daniel Jones. If Daniel Jones is a quarterback for the Giants, that's what we're assuming. JT, Jonathan Taylor, goes in round two. You go along your draft. Anthony Richardson gets sniped. There is Wandell Robinson in round 16. You can tell yourself a story where the ground game of the Colts gets them up, and then you have to run it back, play catch-up mode with Wandale Robinson. So these are just some strategies, some things we want to go over. We're trying to game stack. We're trying to understand the waves of the rounds, where these combined teams are going to be located. So you can understand where not just one team is now, you understand the team associated with week 17. Today, we really covered in great depth, the Rams and the Cardinals. And then, of course, when we miss our cap stacks for QBs, we want to get skinny for best ball hot summer. So hot summer best ball, we are trying to get skinny for the season. Get your skinny stacks out there. I've been Jeremiah Retzlaff. You can find me on X at Coach Retzlaff1. Thank you for coming to Best Ball Study Hall.